now available from National Geographic Home Video. Who's got the greatest kids animal videos in the whole wide world? Hey gang, it's me, Spin, your whirling world wanderer, and National Geographic's really wild animal. See for yourself. No one knows animals like National Geographic, and they've made really wild animals more fun than a barrel full of orangutans. There's exciting animation, fantastic live action photography, and outrageous music videos. So stop monkeying around and get ready for National Geographic's Really Wild Animals. Kids videos that have the whole world running wild. Spin you later. The adventure begins. Three alien sanitation engineers are accidentally launched into space. Now they're out there, and they've just discovered the most amazing place they've ever seen, Earth. Join Captain Rip Rayon and his fearless crew as they go boldly where no aliens have gone before, exploring outrageously, exploring this strange and wonderful world, the world that's right beneath your feet. You'll see mountains erupt in flames. It's hot! Orange hot! Red hot! Down an ocean full of creatures with no bones and no brains. And others with no bones but lots of teeth. Witness waves so enormous they wipe out anything in their path. Unravel the mysteries of ancient mummies. And meet beings even more bizarre than our alien crew. Things just get stranger by the minute, whether you like it or not. Excellent! You'll discover weird facts about volcanoes, mummies, sharks, insects, wild weather, and more. All with the most entertaining guides on Earth. They came from another world, and they're not leaving until they figure out this amazing planet. Every video is an all-new, all-alien adventure from National Geographic. <laughs> because who knows the world better than we do? If you'd like to learn more amazing new video series, call 1-800-627-5162, weekdays, 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern. And now, our feature presentation. Twas a night quite near Christmas, a crisp chill in the air. Inside by the fire, Santa sat in his chair. I was hanging our ornaments to get them just so, while Santa was reading his letters, you know. Some children ask for toys and gifts in their letters, while wanting to know snowy animals better. Hmm. Oh, yes, Samantha. When Santa Santa checks his Santa. list not once, but twice, to make certain which children have been extra nice. Oh, listen to this, Mrs. Claus. Samantha wants a toy penguin this year. And she wants to know if we have penguins at the North Pole. Well, Samantha, to answer your question, there's not a single penguin at the North Pole. But there's plenty of them around the South Pole. Why, just last Christmas, I was traveling over Antarctica. What a sight! Fantastic soaring mountains huge gleaming icebergs, and snow as far as I could see. Then, glory be, there they were, my polar pals, the penguins. Brr, it's colder than a sack of popsicles in Antarctica, you know. In fact, it's the coldest place on Earth, but penguins don't seem to mind. Now, all told, there are four different kinds of penguins that call Antarctica home. Let's see. There are Gentoos, Adelies, Chinstraps, and the biggest penguins of all, the Emperors. 
Penguins are birds, Samantha. But you'll never see a flock of penguins flying around. Cause ho, 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 no matter how hard they try, they just can't get off the ground. Their little wings are built for something else. Flying underwater. Yes, sir, those wings flap like flippers to shoot them through the water. When they leap out, it's called porpoising. Oh, they grab a deep breath of air, always on the lookout for killer whales so they don't become somebody's lunch. If danger gets too near, they rocket out of the water onto the icy shore and slide to safety. Believe it or not, Samantha, it's even colder on land than in the water down here. So penguins rely on their black and white suits to keep them warm. Which really comes in handy when it's time to raise a family. Mom and Pop Penguin take turns keeping their eggs warm for more than four weeks. Once those penguin chicks hatch, they'll stay close to Mom and Dad for warmth and food until they're ready for life on their own. Oh, I almost forgot, Samantha. Here's a penguin postcard just for you. <laughs> jingle bells, jingle bells, waddle all the way. Icebergs jut with a penguin strut at the South Pole far away. Hey, jingle bells, jingle bells, it's a perfect day to waddle, waddle, fly. Flap, flap, and watch the penguins play. They waddle all around, short and fat and wide, looking for a place to sled and slip and slide. They love to dive and swim, their feathers keep them dry. But it's a fact with wings like that, they'll never learn to fly. Oh, jingle bells, jingle bells, let's have fun for hours. Tobogganing across the snow, how's that for penguin power? Whoa, jingle bells, jingle bells, line up and single file. Put on a tux and come with us, we're gonna make you smile. One fine penguin for Samantha, ready to go. Hmm, now where did I put Andy's letter? I was sure I had it. Let's see, Abigail, Aloysius, Arthur, Ashley, he was so worried about the reindeer in the wild finding food this winter. That's right. He left six bunches of carrots for Rudolph last year. Where is that letter? Oh, here it is. Oh, thank you, dear. Ho, 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 ho. So, Andy, you're worried about my reindeer. Well, Mrs. Claus and I give them lots of food. But wild reindeer, or caribou as we sometimes call them, are pretty darn good at finding their own food. Together in big herds, reindeer travel hundreds of miles each year, looking for lichen and other plants to eat. This long trip is called, that's right, a migration. Along the way, their thick fur coats keep them warm. They even have fur completely covering their noses. <laughs> that way, they can shove their snouts right into the snow without freezing their nostrils off. Now, when the food at each stop is gone, it's back on the highway to the next reindeer meal. Why, before the year's over, some reindeer travel over 600 miles, farther than any other creature on land. But reindeer aren't the only animals on the go in the snow. Wild mustang and elk also migrate for a meal. But those big guys, the bison, head for a hot spot that can't be beat. Like here, at Yellowstone National Park. Hot springs and geysers heat up the ground so grass can grow year-round. In deep snow, bison use their hairy heads like snow shovels to uncover the grass hidden below. So you see, Andy, reindeer and other animals in the wild have special ways to find their food. But uh, Santa's reindeer are still just a little bit spoiled. So keep putting those carrots out for them, would you? And don't forget about my cookies. Much, 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 out on the prairie land. 
crunch, crunch, crunch. All of that green for us is food. Finding it keeps us on the move. Ho, 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 didn't you know? We don't care if it's under the snow. We use our heads to dig it out. We know it's down there, there's no doubt. This is how we spend our days. First we travel, then we graze. We're on the move when we are done. It's a life of eat and run. Under the snow, we use our heads to dig it out. We know it's down there, there's no doubt. Now, let's see. Maria has some good questions about bears. Dear Santa, do you ever see polar bears in your backyard? Well, Maria, as a matter of fact, polar bears do live in the Arctic. And ho, 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 it does get pretty chilly here. Why, temperatures can drop to more than 50 below zero. That's even colder than your freezer. But that's okay. Polar bears are dressed just right. That thick white fur keeps them warm. And Maria, check out those big padded paws. They're the size of dinner plates. Male polar bears wander the ice all winter long. But this female, is just coming out of her den after six long months under the snow. Now it's time for a great big stretch and a slide. But she wasn't alone. Here's what she's been up to, giving birth to cubs. It's the first time these little cubs have seen their snowy Arctic home, and they've got plenty to learn. For the next two years, the cubs will stick close to mom. She'll teach them everything they need to know, like how to catch a seal dinner. Oops, missed that one. By the time these cubs grow up, they'll be just about the largest bears on Earth. Why, they can weigh as much as 10 people. Polar bears, kings of the Arctic. Oh, and there's a P.S. Are polar bears and pandas related? <laughs> I almost missed that question. Funny you should ask, Maria. Cause pandas aren't true bears like polar bears. They're in a class by themselves. They live high in the mountains of China. With these thick coats, giant pandas can survive cold winters. And even in the snow, they can find their favorite meal, yummy bamboo. Panda moms hold their tiny cubs close to their bodies for warmth. Her noisy baby is no bigger than a kitten. But by next winter, you might find him hanging out in a tree. This pig needs lots to eat that keeps him on the go. Walking, swimming, hitching rides on the nearest ice floe. Sometimes they will stop and play, just like you and I do. When they're hungry, I would say, better watch the igloo. The pendants like a teddy bear, but they're not bears at all. He climbs up in the mountain trees, but never seems to fall. Fights the cold and snow, what you heard is true. Oh, they sleep and eat lots of fresh bamboo. <laughs> Listen to this letter from Audra. Dear Santa, today I saw an animal in a book that looks like a whale, but with a horn on its nose like a unicorn. Is this animal real? And can I have one for Christmas? 
Oh, <laughs> Audra, those animals are narwhals. They wouldn't make good pets, but they're very real indeed. The male narwhal has a long horn. It's really a tooth that can grow up to 10 feet. Imagine putting one of those under your pillow for the tooth fairy. <laughs> As you might imagine, narwhals don't have many enemies, but there are other dangers in their ocean home. Er. Once, when I was flying over the Arctic, I saw a family of narwhals swimming together in the pack ice, looking for fish. Suddenly, the ice closed around them. They were trapped. This meant trouble, because like all whales, narwhals need air to breathe, and the open ocean was miles away. They carefully took turns surfacing for air, but if the hole closed, their air supply would be cut off. Their only chance was for the ice to break up. Whoa, Audra just in the nick of time. The ice shifted again. The trapped narwhals were finally free to swim back to the open ocean to join other Arctic whales. Now here's another whale that might interest you, the beluga. Belugas used to be called sea canaries. And you know why, Audra? Because they sound like birds. Listen. Those sounds are the way belugas talk to each other and find their way under all that ice. Belugas swim in family groups. The young calves stick close to mom. They're born gray and slowly turn white as they get older. Now, Audra, belugas and narwhals share their Arctic home with lots of other animals, including these curious black and white birds called murres. They're quite clumsy on land, and they even have a little trouble getting into the air. But the sea, their wings power them through the water. And their legs act like rudders, steering them to a deep sea dinner, sometimes 300 feet down. Pretty amazing, eh? You know, you never know who you'll find living in and around the Arctic ice. Just watch.
Xavier, Xena, Zal, Zelda. We're almost through the Z's, dear. Oh, and here's Zack's letter. This year, I would like a red sled for Christmas. Also, are there any animals who play in the snow like kids do? Well, Zack, ho ho, let me tell you about some animals who don't need a sled to slide around. They're otters. Talk about playful. These guys are expert sliders. They can zip along at 15 miles an hour. Now they're slipping off to lunch. For an otter, catching fish is the easy part. Holding on to it, that's another story. These coyotes want a free meal. But the otters think lunch is worth fighting for. <laughs> the river otter's cousins off the Alaskan coast, the sea otters, never have to worry about landlubbers stealing their food. That's because they seldom come out on land, even when it's time to eat. That's right, Zack. They use their stomachs as a floating dinner table. And even as a floating table for their babies. Though they spend most of their time in the icy ocean, sea otters don't get cold, because they have the thickest fur of any animal. And to keep it in good shape, otters spend hours grooming. When their chores are done, otters do what otters do best. They play around. Walruses, on the other hand, prefer to lounge around on land. You would too if you weighed a ton. That's like two grand pianos. A third of all that weight is blubber, a layer of fat that can be six inches thick. But you won't see a walrus trying to lose weight. Heck no! All that blubber keeps them warm and protects them from sharp tusks. Ow! At chow time, they roll into the water swimming like mermaids. See, walruses are expert swimmers, diving 200 feet for a tasty clam snack on the muddy bottom. Why, one walrus can eat thousands of clams in a single meal. Grab your flippers and your blubber. Take a dive, we'll meet down under. When it's cold, it doesn't matter. It just means we must get fatter. Tis the time to have a cold that fills with air and helps me float. My front or on my back la, 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 la. while I have this snack. La, 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 la. Arriba! Come along, we'll take a ride. La, 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 la. Follow me, we're gonna slide. La, 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 la. Now catch a fish down in the water. La, 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 la. You ought to be a river otter. La, 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 So we've seen all the animals as wild as can be. Now here's a little present from Santa and me. On the first day of Christmas, Santa gave to me a panda in a tall tree. On the second day of Christmas, Santa gave to me two polar bears and a panda in a tall tree. On the third day, Santa gave to me three waltzing walrus, two polar bears, and a panda in a tall tree. On the fourth day of Christmas, Santa gave to me four coyotes howling, three waltzing walrus, two polar bears, and a panda in a tall tree. On the fifth day of Christmas, Santa gave to me Howling 
three wolves and walrus, two polar bears, and a panda in a tall tree. On the sixth day of Christmas, Santa gave to me six puffins, puffin, five killer whales. Four coyotes howling, three wolves and walrus, two polar bears, and a panda in a tall tree. On the seventh day of Christmas, Santa gave to me seven bison munching, six puffins puffing, five killer whales. Four coyotes howling, three wolves and walrus, two polar bears, and a panda in a tall tree. On the eighth day of Christmas, Santa gave to me eight mirrors of diving, seven bison munching, six puffins puffing, Five killer whales Four coyotes howling Three wolves and walrus Two polar bears And a panda in a tall tree On the ninth day of Christmas Santa gave to me Nine penguins flapping Eight mirrors a diving Seven bison munching Six puffins puffing Five killer whales Four coyotes howling Three wolves Santa gave to me ten narwhals bobbing, nine penguins flapping, eight mules a diving, seven bison munching, six puffins puffing, five killer whales, four coyotes howling, three wolves and walrus, two polar bears, and a panda in a tall tree. On the eleventh day of Christmas, Santa gave to me eleven beluga singing. Ten narwhals bobbing, nine penguins flapping, eight wheels of diving, seven bison munching, six puffins puffing, five killer whales. Four coyotes howling, three wolves and walrus, two polar bears, and a panda in a tall tree. On the twelfth day of Christmas, give to me twelve reindeer running, eleven beluga singing, ten narwhals bobbing. Seven bison munching, six puffins puffing, five killer whales. Four coyotes howling, three wolves and walrus, two polar bears, and a panda in a So that's our tradition with dear Santa and me, a few nights before Christmas, as we decorate our tree reading all of your letters while we check the list twice during this magical season in the snow and the ice.
We hope you have enjoyed this presentation from the National Geographic Video Library.